the official podcast of the David A. Howe Public Library. I'm Eric Mickles. You had a lot of trouble yeah, getting, that was, that was getting psyched start. up for yeah. that intro, something yeah. you say every week. Yeah, every week. Yeah, every Same week. thing. Same back time. Though I can never get the book, book news, news and author fun. news to sound different. Yeah, yeah, you keep trying to rhyme it. And yeah. It's forcing. Anyway, I'm yeah. Nick Gunning. Book releases. Book reviews. Yeah. Author news. Yeah. Literary I events. Think they, I think they know. I don't think we really Do, need to okay. get into it. Um, Listeners, I hope you know what you're in store for. Yeah. It's podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go, because I'm definitely going to derail this train. Yeah, I can see it. It's painful. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go first. How about that? All right. Here's some things I finished in the week. Uh, I picked up Fantastic Four Volume 2, Road Trip. It's a series we have here in our graphic novel collection. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we ran that report, we discovered that Fantastic Four was among our more popular items. So yeah, we uh, we surprise, loaded up and surprise. Loaded Fantastic Fox, Four. Fox Twentieth Century Fox would have loved to I hear know. that. I <laughs> know. Where were they when Miles Teller needed them? Yeah. Um, so I read Road Trip, which is the second volume. The first volume starts very promising. Reed Richards right. has this disease, and he's got to go through space and time to try to find a cure, but he doesn't yeah. tell the rest of the Fantastic Four. So yeah. it sets up kind of a cool arc. So the he second, doesn't bring the Fantastic Four. He brings Alman. Simon and Theodore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't for the road ship. For the road ship. Right. Fantastic Four road wow, ship. Wow. Look at that. You yeah. really tied a ribbon on that. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Uh, the second volume not as good. It's just Sorry. herky jerky, and you never know where it's going. And herky. Did you say herky jerky or herky jerky? <laughs> I said herky gurdy man. <laughs> I love that song. Sorry. I finished Troy Denning's The Unseen Queen, book two in the Dark Nest trilogy. This is Star Wars. It suffers, I think, from what many second book suffer is that nothing really starts and nothing really concludes yeah. so especially in the star wars books yeah the first book was like eh, it was okay the yeah. second book was like more of the same and it's really weird so to okay. me that the star wars books have that happen considering they're based off of a franchise that has episode five yeah i know because well you think they would be like oh we'll just yeah. try to do something like empire well, strikes I think back that's why those movies are work because you kind of it's not like and here's exactly where we were the last time yeah. you saw us it's like you know, basically, they're each kind of standalone. Well, those book, yeah, the books never do that. It's no, it's like a day later. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna round out the trilogy, and I hope that it drives it home, and it isn't just another like meandering bit of. That's the thing, you know. I think because I've I've said I've had problems yeah. with the Star Wars trilogies well, versus the standalones. Yeah, and I think it's because the standalones will take place in like you know a couple of days yeah. or weeks or something, the but the thing. books. You think they would go over like years or something like yeah. the movies, but they don't. Yeah, this one feels like a lot of filler. And I, I picked up the series initially because it's where Leia really does her like Jedi thing, which I always find interesting. But they don't really even do it that much, so yeah. it's kind of a letdown. I wish Jedi Leia, like, you, you don't like Jedi. Leia. I, it doesn't you really. Know, yeah, don't I don't I really get excited. Like, Woo, I know. Jedi I always Leia. have been. And yeah. I don't know. Uh, I finished X Men Battle for the Atom. So, this is a big X Men crossover event with all new yeah. X Men, Wolverine and the X Men, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It was all right. I, you huh. didn't like it at all, right? I, I mean, it's Brian Michael Bendis at times, and I don't like yeah. him. Yeah. I just didn't really dig the story. It was messy. I never like anything Bendis has to say about the X Men. Okay. Wow. Um, and I can't. I mean, yeah, it was an all new X Men cross. Oh, I didn't like the whole Kitty Pride leaving with the yeah. new X-Men. Yeah, that was weird. All right, everybody. You made me mad, so I'm leaving. I'm like, the, shut up. The last thing I read here was, uh, this is borderline book news, too. Well, no. It's uh, John Grisham's The Tumor. Yeah. So, this is a weird one. I've read that. Uh, no, you have not. No, I have not. <laughs> but did you know the what it snows? <laughs> Grisham sits on a lot of boards, and one of them is this focused ultrasound foundation. And <laughs> it's... Uh, the book is is written to basically to be an informative, like, here's this potential new procedure. Hold on. Okay. You said he sits on boards and make me think of surfboards. Yeah. John Grisham does lawyer books. Why is there no surfer lawyer? That's great. Like, who That's lives great. out in California. Michael Connolly's Lincoln Lawyer series, his, like, paralegal is a surfer. Oh, darn. So, so they'd probably beat us of, to it. It's kind of silly. All right. Well, we've got Clint McGavin. So John Grisham's The Tumor. Uh-huh. Uh, it's re- I read it. And it's really more just, it's just like, here's what this technology could do. And it was kind of billed like, it's a story that also does that, but it's really right. not. It's really not. So, so not so, like a Crichton book. No, no. And I, that's the thing. Like, I know that the point was like, here, look at this great information. But I feel like he's a good enough author that he could have made a compelling story that told you that. But instead, it was just sort of like, here it is. <laughs> so... Eh. If you're interested, uh, you can get free physical copies of the book, or you can download them for your Kindle or Nooks or whatever you have uh, from the 
Focused Ultrasound Foundation website, which is www.fusfoundation.org. So if you're interested in this... Uh, what did you just say? F-U-S. <laughs> now now that I say it again, yeah, it's it was yeah. for Focused Ultrasound. Yeah, okay. Uh, I like how you... So, I thought you would have been on on that, and then you... I, no, I didn't. Right. So, so if you've heard about this, this new John Grisham story, this is all that it is. It's not... It's yeah. short, but it's unless you're really interested in this technology, this new medical technology, it's it's really not. Oh, I wish I was. Not great. So, wish I was. Anyway, that's all. I'm currently reading our book club books, which are Station Eleven by uh, Emily St. John Mandel. Have you started this? I have not started it, okay. but I am going to be, be re- I'm going to be reading it. Okay. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm also reading Track of the Cat by Nevada Bar, which mm-hmm. we've <laughs> covered. Yeah. And I'm reading a graphic novel, Green Arrow, Volume Two, Triple Threat. This is the yeah. new Fifty Two Green Arrow, yeah. which is just a sloppy mess. Is it still? It is. I read the first volume like when it first came right. out and was like, I don't think so. Yeah. But I thought, eh, I'll give it another shot because yeah. I want Green Arrow to act like Green Arrow. And he's also not doing it there. Yeah. So maybe, not great. you know, after watching the Deadpool movie, I'm like, yeah. maybe characters just don't act away anymore. Yeah. Maybe they just act however they want. I guess. Or however authors want. Like, I yeah. thought I used to understand like what Deadpool was about. Yeah. And then I saw the movie. I'm like, oh, Deadpool swears all the time. Yeah. Like, he did. He doesn't. So wait, did you, you did or you didn't like the Deadpool movie? It was fine. Okay. It was funny and stuff, but I mean, it is weird for me to see that movie and hear some of the words, because like in the comic books, it just doesn't say it. So it was a little disconcerting. Okay. Um, So you didn't feel that it was a representation of the character? No, I mean, he still, he still is Deadpool. Okay. It's just like a take on him. I don't really know Deadpool. Actually, the uh, X-Men Battle of the Atom is the only thing I've ever read that had Deadpool in it. Oh, really? And he was just a minor character. Though we do, we have some recent additions to the graphic mm-hmm. novel collection that are Deadpool. So if you're curious about Deadpool, check well, out. Well, I have his two original miniseries in single issue form. And Nerd alert. his first 69 issues in single issue form. And the Agent X series that came after that by Gail wow. Simone. Wow. She actually wrote uh, so this is just Deadpool you bragging. for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So All right. don't tell me I don't know Deadpool. Yeah. I have the first appearance of Batgirl. Really? Yeah. Pretty cool. I have the. We're just bragging about comic books. Is that I have the okay. single issue where Tim Drake decides to be Robin. Oh, that's cool. Can I have it? Yeah. Really? I mean, I guess you probably like it more than me. Oh my gosh! It has Scarecrow in it. Woo! I think it's part of a larger story, though. Okay. And I think it's only the end of it. Okay. So. Well, he says something. He's like, "Oh, I think still, of the legacy was with interesting. Dick Grayson and Jason Todd, because as we all know, if Tim right. Drake figured it out. Yeah. Except maybe in the New Fifty Two. No, I think he did still figure it out. In I the don't new 52, but he, Tim Drake. In, in the New Fifty Two, he never becomes. Robin. He just becomes Red he Robin. He figures it out, but then he just becomes Red Robin and does his own thing with the Teen Titans. So he never got, like, adopted. Right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was different. Yeah. New 52. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, sorry. What's your bookmark? Uh, it's right Don't here on the credit. table. It's oh, right here on the boy. table. And I knocked, knocked this down. knocked your mic cover over knocked just to down. do that bit that was a visual bit that they can't even see. Uh, listeners, so. I, uh, I reached across the table to pick up a bookmark. Picked up an actual flying bookmark, there. yeah. It's... It's hilarious. Yeah. And the, our in-studio audience is dying yeah. laughing on the floor. Yeah. They are. <laughs> that, yeah. I guess that's also a visual gag. Yeah. It All didn't right. work, so we don't have anybody in here. Ooh. Okay. You want to tell me what you read? How about that? Eric's dancing. I was dancing. I Another know, visual gag. Visual. All right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, I feel like the listeners could hear the energy, This though. is not <laughs> the place for your slapstick. <laughs> okay. All right, so I read some comics. I read hey. Marvel Zombies 2, which oh, is not boy. as good as Marvel Zombies 1. Wow. Marvel Zombie 1, as, as much as the concept is kind of dumb, it was still a fun read. Okay. Um, this one, it just didn't have anything. Though it not was fun. funny at one point, all the Marvel Zombies, so all the superheroes in the Marvel Universe have been turned into zombies and are eating the universe and everything. Okay. They find Ego, the living planet. Living planet. So it's just a... I, didn't we talk about this last week? I'm pretty sure we did. Huh. Did I read that last week? I don't know. Well, we've, we've talked about this. Cause you told me all right. Well, I also read three volumes of 100 Bullets, a Vertigo title. Um, I read the first volume when the first two volumes a long time ago. Didn't mm-hmm. really like them. Uh, read volumes three, four. They were okay. Read volume five. Didn't like it. Okay. I'll probably just keep reading it because... <laughs> You're going to keep reading it's, it. Wow. It's weird. It's, okay. I, there's this other series called doubling, DMZ. Doubling down. There's another Vertigo title. It's called DMZ, and I don't really like it, but I've been reading it for a while. That's crazy. I, yeah. I mean, they're interesting. There's so many things that I want to read. Yeah. I guess it's just something about it clicks with me, but okay. sometimes the stories themselves don't. But basically, a guy comes, this, uh, this man called Graves will come to people okay. and offer them an attache case with 100 bullets and a gun, and the bullets aren't traceable. Oh. So they can do whatever they want with those bullets okay. and get away I mean, with it. There are other ways. 
solve well, crime without being able to track the bullets. Well, it's not always about stopping crime. Oh. It's about sometimes getting revenge. I sometimes see. it's not giving it to good people. Okay. So. All right. And okay. at the moment, I'm reading, uh, let's say I finished it. I will have finished it after we done, finish this okay. podcast, Trouble in Paradise by Robert B. Parker. I'm going to act as if I finished it. Oh, wow. But, I mean, I will. Couldn't go the distance. You had, like, no. three pages left. Yeah, well. <laughs> All right. I will finish it. Okay. I'm also reading The Invisibles, book one, deluxe edition by Grant Morrison. It was oh, weird boy. and trippy. We'll oh, see how boy. far I get in this. Well, that's a shock. <laughs> it's from the 90s, 1994 Grant Morrison. Oh, boy. So, I tell you what, as much as I complain about him, he, the goodwill he got from... All new X Men, not all new X Men from uh, just new X Men, yeah. and All Star Superman yeah. has carried him a long way with me. Wow, and you're you're very forgiving. Yeah, good for you. There's something else he had to write that I must have really liked I because so. I can't imagine just those would be. Anyway, yeah, doesn't seem like it. If I remember, I'll tell you. Okay. If I really liked anything, but I liked All Star Superman. Nice. I like Batman and Son. No, Batman and Son's crazy. No, with the ninja, the ninja man bats. It's crazy. That's fun. It's sheer craziness. I, I, I saw ninja man bats come down. Oh, and I did like Action Comics Volume 1. Okay. It was after that. Oh, and I liked his oh, Justice yeah. League. Okay. I mean, Action Comics is okay. It sounds like you're a huge Grant Morrison fan. No, I'm so not. That's really what's coming across here, whether, whether you intend to or did not. Did you ever get into his Animal Man? Animal Man! No, no. I think I maybe read the first five. It was like, what is this? And his, stopped. His new X Men is probably. One of the best X-Men okay. runs ever. All right. Well, I don't anyway, X-Men. this has been a nerdy I know. Bookmark. It happens. It happens sometimes. Yeah. They after I us. finish, after I really finish Trouble in Paradise by Robert B. Parker, I'm going to read Divergent by Veronica Roth. Oh, okay. For our book club. For our book club. For coming soon. YA for adults book coming club. Coming soon. Meeting yeah. March 8th, 630. We'd love to have oh you. Oh my gosh, that is coming soon. soon. I know. Oh, I thought yeah. I had more time. You got to get reading sport. What? I said you got to get reading and then I called you sport. I didn't like that part, right. You didn't like sport. Yeah. Chief? No. Okay. I don't know. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, so that's it for bookmark. Mm. Uh, now uh, we should have done this after we ate, because now all I can think about is food. Is food? I want my bookmark to be in a hamburger. That would be disgusting. Yeah, I, maybe an edible bookmark. I guess a pickle be could fine. be a hamburger bookmark. What is a pickle a, if not a, a hamburger pickle bookmark? Pickle could be a hamburger bookmark. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's got to go in the t-shirts. The all the books <laughs> yeah. t-shirts. That'd be excellent. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, for all you kids listening, gather around the mics. Yeah. And listen in for, Daddy, uh, he's talking to me. for Uncle Nick's Book Corner. Okay, yeah. Here are some of the kids' books that yeah. I've read recently yeah. and enjoyed that I'd like to pass on Kiss from a Rose by Seal. Nope, that's a... The that's a, junior novelization. You know, that's a song. That's Did a song. you know, Billy? That's a song that you don't know, <laughs> uh, as we've learned. Yeah. Well, it's from uh, Batman Forever. I've read a couple of... Uh, we're, we're coming up on a big, uh, a big Dr. Seuss month here. I got prove some, it. I got some paperwork in my pocket. Oh, wow. You really <laughs> can prove it. I can. Uh, this month is, well, March is the Dr. Seuss birth month, so there's a lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing a, a story time on March 1st and March 5th where we're reading uh, some Seuss books. We've got a pajama story time coming up. We're showing Horton Here's a Who down the road. Uh, so keeping that in mind, I've got a couple of Seuss books here I want to talk about, and we're going to do a whole Seuss episode. It's going to blow your mind. Okay. Uh, I read Scrambled Eggs Super. Now, because, because I'm going chrono- chronologic, chron- chronological, chronological. Yeah, chronological. I guess I was chronologically. Thinking. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I was reading all these bizarre ones. Yeah, and scrambled egg super is one that I've never ever heard of in my now life. I scrambled eggs. Yeah, and this is about a kid who's like he doesn't want just the regular old scrambled eggs. Like scrambled eggs taste the same, so he just goes throughout the world collecting all the weirdest eggs he can find and making himself like delicious exotic scrambled eggs. So he's like maybe. Causing some rare species to go extinct. Yeah, yeah. he's single-handedly <laughs> wiping out yeah. the bird species yeah. in these made-up Seuss lands. Okay. So that is a weird book. Yeah. Not great. Pretty forgettable. Yeah. But where can we get scrambled eggs today? Uh, Texas Hot. Yeah, right across the street from They'll the David A. Howe Public Library located also, in Roseville, New York. I read Horton Hears a Who. Yeah. So it was About nice time. to get like a recognizable one. Yeah, because I've already, I read uh, Horton Hatches the Egg. I read Horton and the Quarterbug. Yeah. Which are the first two Horton stories. Horton's a popular character. I know, but he doesn't really pop with audiences until story three here. Yeah, with, uh, yeah Horton that's, his, that's his moment to So shine. that's a classic. I mean, that's, that's for good reason. Although mm-hmm. I actually kind of liked Horton Hatches the Egg better. But huh? Horton Hears a Who. Again, we're showing that March 19th. Yeah. But. I like Horton Meets Jack the Ripper. Whoa, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, also, I, uh, on our, when we did our, our Kids Book Award episode, which was forever ago, yeah. I put a hold on this book, and we don't have a lot in the system, 
and I finally just got it. So that's oh. uh, that's one called Don't Throw It to Mo, which won the Theodore Seuss Geisel Award. Okay. And that's about uh, the kid who's he's the smallest kid on a football team, yeah. and nobody takes him seriously. Yeah, don't and the, throw it to him. The coach, right. The coach hatches this plan where they're going to take advantage of nobody paying attention to him. So it's a good message. It's a good story. Does it end where he doesn't catch the ball and nobody likes him anymore? That's the Peanuts movie that you're oh, thinking right. of. That's Charlie Brown. But this was great. Don't throw it to Mo. I also read Pug and Doug, which is new to our collection by hmm. Steve Breen. You'd enjoy this one because it has a very Muppety vibe. I do like, like the Muppets. The pictures in the in the story I were love you know appealing to kids. My son loved it, but it had a lot of humor that was strictly like for adults. Like you would okay. get what they were going for. So uh, that was fun. Last is a board book by Lori Cohen called A White Butterfly. And this is basically just images. It's butterflies of different colors and just really visually appealing. It's a real simple story. It was a lot of fun. So if you're kids' books fans, if you're reading to your kids, um, there's a couple of, of books for you. Okay. Book news? Book news. All right. Book releases. Uh-huh. Maybe we should call it. No? Book, book news is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Book releases is fine with me. No, it's fine. All right, everybody. Our podcasts yeah. out there in the nether. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you have something? Do you have advanced notices? I do. All right. Yeah. Nick has oh, some advanced notices. I would be glad to go first. Well, uh, Claudia Gray, <gasps> have you, are you familiar with this? Yeah. Idea? Yeah. She wrote uh, A Thousand Pieces of You and Star Wars Lost Stars. Oh, okay. Which, listeners, if you haven't picked up yet after all my recommendation, there's no hope for you. Yeah. Those are both You'll need books. a new hope. <laughs> You're right, those are both... Actually, we also just got 10,000 Skies Above You, which is the sequel to A Thousand Pieces of You. Oh, okay, so you do. Wow, you know Claudia Gray a lot better than I do. Uh, Well, this book is coming out called Bloodline New Republic. This is a Star Wars... I saw this. Star Wars book. This is an adult book. Yeah, it's not a YA Star Wars book. So this is uh, in this new... I, it's not really so much a series. It's just now everything they write is like canonical. Yeah, yeah. so it's within. They all fit together. This is Disney giving the thumbs up to, to, yeah, to, to the, the books finally. Book. So this is set before the Force Awakens. All so right, this I'll is coming. Read it. This is coming out May third. So if you're interested in that, May third. Okay. The next two I have are they're very fortuitous with uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, I don't coming, believe you. Also coming out May third, we have. Robert B. Parker's Slow Burn. Okay. This is the 44th Spencer book. Wow. And the sixth bo- Spencer book written by a, another author. So this is actually written by Ace Atkins, who okay. is a pretty popular author on his own. He has his own series, uh, but he's taken over the, the Spencer books from when Robert B. Parker passed away. So this is number 44. Uh, next, we're Boar Island, which is an Anna Pigeon novel by Nevada Parr. This is Anna Pigeon, book number 19. What and was her name? Nevada Bar. Oh, I, th- I thought you were saying the place where Raz al Ghul lives in Arrow. That's, that's Nanda Parbat. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but this is, <laughs> this is fun because we're, the book club is currently reading Track of the Cat, which is uh, Anna Pigeon number one by Nevada Bar. We're going to meet on that How just fortuitous. this coming week, March 3rd at 3 o'clock. Okay. So you can join us for that. And then last in uh, large print coming out in May also, we have uh, a romance back in the saddle. By Ruth Logan Hearn. Okay. To large print fans, yeah. look for that in May. All right. So what do we got coming out in the near future? Buddy? All right, podcasts. Uh, <laughs> March 1st. Excluding Twitter user at Mick Blame, who does yeah, not like that handle. Have, so yeah, you, that we're not apply. calling you That doesn't apply to him at all. Yeah. It's everybody else. Uh, March 1st, 2016. We're going to see some new books released. That makes sense. It does make sense. Yeah. March is starting off the month with some new books. Uh... And these are available to buy or rent from your library. Actually, do we say rent? Check out. Yeah. I mean, you can rent books. Like, yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to get into it with yeah. you, Thanks. podcasts. Wow. <laughs> All right. Living Forward, A Proven Plan to Stop Drifting and Get the Life You Want by Michael Hyatt. You know what we should do? Instead of reading the descriptions of these self-help books, we should read the descriptions of the authors and see where they get yeah, off telling have... us what we should do. Yeah. Uh, how? Anyway. Oh, no, but didn't open up a description. Maybe he hasn't read anything. No, I wrote, it doesn't matter. Uh, also, Evicted. Pro- uh, I said pro- Poverty and Profit in the American City. At first time I saw this, I thought it said Poetry and Profit. And I thought, mm, have poetry. Yeah. But that it doesn't. No po- poverty. No poetry at all. Yeah. Though, doesn't poverty bring about poetry? It can, certainly. <laughs> yeah. Matthew Desmond. Among other things. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a tour through neighborhoods of Milwaukee to tell the story of eight families on the edge of poverty. Not like on the edge of like 
So similar to the plot of Laverne and Shirley, if I'm remembering right. Yes, okay. Uh, last <laughs> not fiction book. Schlemiel, uh, Trouble Boys, The True Story of the Replacements. Hey, yeah. that band. Yeah, I saw this. It's by Bob Mayer, and I had no idea. They're called, somebody said uh, they're one of the last great rock and roll bands of the 20th century. Huh. And I listened to some of their songs, having seen this, and I don't. No. I don't know them at all, no, I nor do I care for the music much. Yeah, I didn't do How did you describe them? You described they, the music of the sounded, replacements. They sounded like, this was before I knew the name even, yeah. but they, they sound to me like when you're watching a movie and they can't get like a real rock band, so they have somebody do like, yeah. you know, it's almost that song, yeah. you know, but it's yeah. not. That's what the replacements yeah. felt they like. They kind of had a Ramones feel to them without sounding like the Ramones. Yeah, hmm. I get right. you. So, I don't know. Replacements. If, if there are any replacement fans out there... Give us a holler. Or uh, I wasn't going to ask them to. No, let us know. All right, what do we got? We got a kid's book, Big Nate. Uh, Big Nate. I don't know what I said, Nate. I don't know why you said uh, it either. I read ahead, and then all the words jumble up. What oh. is that called? Uh, just a personal problem of yours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Big Nate. Thunka, thunka, thunka. What? By Lincoln Pierce. Okay. How many Big Nate books are Did we already figure this out? I don't think we did Big Nate. No, I don't know how many big name books there are. Well, it doesn't say. Okay. I assume there's hundreds. <laughs> and we've got two. Probably. Yeah, yeah, we've got two mangas coming out. One Punch Man, Volume Five. Oh, that's been popular. I don't think it I've seen work. that on the shelf yeah. like at all since we and got I it. I just I finished the first season. So of the anime. Of the anime, yes. Okay. So it's good. One Punch Man, Volume Five, and Seraph of the End, Volume Eight, Vampire oh. Rain. That's another one that as that soon as we put. Spooky. Some people say it looks spooky, but it's one of those uh, mangas that as soon as we put the first seven on the shelf, they just haven't been in. Hmm. They just constantly get checked out. Nice. Um, and wait, who buys the manga? You do. Oh my gosh. Wow. I really have my finger on the pulse. This is the eighth Big Nate book, by the way. Oh, wow. I thought there were a lot more yeah. than that. All right. I got a couple of no, I mean, smaller name fiction <laughs> books. I almost said no names. Wow. But they're fiction. Actually, I think some of them are... I don't even are, think uh, you needed to say that at all. But, but then take, we've got a big Take that, name. you got people. a big name. I see. All right. So Double it's like, Switch. It's the contrast. TT Monday. <laughs> Blackmail, Bullets, Deception. Oh, it's no. time to play ball. That is a lot. Uh, what? That, all right. Last description in this one is... Uh, Adcock is... Uh, immediately swept up into a high-pressure game full of surprise twists, double crosses, and deadly gambits that will leave him fighting for his life in danger of losing more than the heat of his fastball wow. or spot in the playoffs. Scary. Yeah. Nothing like a baseball thriller. No. Like baseball thriller. I love me a good baseball thriller. <laughs> yeah. Mrs. Houdini. Uh-oh. By Victoria Kelly. Uh-oh. Uh, you know, behind every Houdini is a Mrs. Houdini. Is a Mrs. Houdini, yeah. Helping him Her greatest escape was getting out of that marriage. Oh, wow. Didn't he die? <laughs> Yeah, before escape artist Harry Houdini died. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it's uh, like a murder plot. <laughs> uh, he vowed he would find a way to speak to his beloved wife, Bess, from beyond the grave using a coded message known only to the two of them. Ooh. And the last line of this description is... Uh, wow, these are always... Around our set. No. When the mystery finally leads Bess to the doorsteps of a mysterious young photographer, she realizes that her husband's magic may have been more than just illusion. Wow. It may have been love. It, it may have been. Yeah. It sounds like it probably so, was. That, that last bit was not. You added, I added that. that. You yeah. added that. Okay. So. We know. Uh, and here's the other. Oh, yeah. Okay. Last Days of Magic by Mark Tompkins. And these are all like debut authors. Yeah. Uh, what became of magic in the world, Nick? I don't know. Who I, needed to do. Uh, you know who, who would know, though? Do away with it. Mrs. Houdini. Reasons? Mrs. Houdini could She tell would. You. Yeah. These would be good. Yeah. Last Days of Magic were the last days of the magic. Marriage. Yeah. So apparently she escaped. Yeah. Is what you want to go with? Yeah, by killing him. Yeah. All right. Um, the Last Days of Magic introduces us to the unforgettable characters who grapple with quest for power, human frailty, and the longing for knowledge that has been made taboo. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I love that game. Taboo? Yeah. You can't say the list of words. Right. Unless you do. Try Say one of the list of the words. Right. Yeah, so just say one. Uh, Kate. Me. <laughs> taboo. Uh, you can't say it. It's getting so fun. I know. <laughs> The Passenger by Lisa Me. Lutz. Oh, I can't say the? No, you can't. Passenger. You can't say that either. Okay. It's going to be a hard one. So I have to describe the book without saying those words. Yeah. Okay, but I can't say the? Right. Okay. A Traveler. Okay. And then you guess? Uh, I don't... The Passenger by Lisa Lutz. Yes! Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I was always good at it. I was always good at the game. Uh, she's written The Spellman Files 
Spellman? Spellman, probably. Spellman! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Spellman. Uh, with heart stopping escapes and devious deceptions, The Passenger is an amazing psychological thriller about defining yourself while you pursue your path to survival. One thing <laughs> is certain the ride will leave you breathless. <laughs> so there you go. Great. And the last one big name author. Though apparently you don't think he's a big name author anymore. Okay. The Gangster. An Isaac Bell adventure by Clive Custler. Oh, yeah. Do you think he's still a big name author? <laughs> well, he's still popular. Yeah, I know. It's at this point, it's just like a Clive Cussler factory. Yeah. He just put well, it's also by Justin Scott. Oh. Oh, Bieber, the Justin Scott factory. Oh, okay, the Justin Scott factory. Yeah. Uh, and that's the book releases. We've got some book news. Okay. Uh, George R. R. Martin says that a Game of Thrones twist will appear in the books, but not in the TV show. <laughs> twist. Because the twist involves a character who is dead in the show, but alive in the books. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Book readers, not show watchers, congratulations. Yeah. You have something to constantly annoy us show watchers you with. You sure do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? The books deviate from the show. And uh-huh. like, yeah, shut up. Uh-huh. Sorry, all you Game of Thrones yeah. book readers who... Anyway. I got tired there. <laughs> this is what happens when I don't I know. have breakfast sorry. and lunch I'm before this podcast. I've got no protein. Uh-huh. Get me a protein shake. I, uh, next time I will. You give me a protein shake? Yeah, sure. We're getting a blender. That's true. We and are. We're going to start making work smoothies. Work we can smoothies. make podcast smoothies. We can. Yeah. Oh, and then we can have a segment you could, called you could What's in This your, Smoothie? Post your podcast yes. smoothie recipes. All right. <laughs> Look uh, out, Rachel Ray. Does she make smoothies? I don't know what she does. What, what does she do? She's on TV. For what? Like cooking and stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next, oh wait, I started saying the title of the book, but I didn't say what we were doing. Okay. New York Times bestsellers. Here we go. Ready? Number 10, The Next Always by Nora Roberts. Hey. It's a historic hotel in Maryland is getting a facelift from Montgomery Brothers and their eccentric mother. It's book one in a trilogy. She's always doing that. The In Boone's Burrow trilogy. <laughs> yeah, I read that right, actually. Title. Number nine, Girl on the Train by hey. Paula Hawkins. Number eight, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dewar. Just go away. <laughs> no, that book. I'm sick of hearing that. Oh, okay. Of, I mean, good for him. Good for you, Anthony. Those are both going to be movies. Good for you. So those are going to be there for a long time, I think. I know. They'll probably resurge. Yeah. Brotherhood in Depth by J.D. Robb. Oh, that's two Nora Roberts. No, J.D. Robb. Oh, they look similar. Uh, number six, <laughs> NYPD Red. Two. Four. No, it's four. four. It's four. By James Patterson and Marshall Carp. <laughs> probably NYPD Red 5 is out already. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure, but... Yeah. Uh, the Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. <laughs> is that what a nightingale sounds like? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, find Her, Lisa Gardner, number four. Yeah, where is Lisa Gardner? I don't know. We have to find we her. We have to find her. Wouldn't that be fun? A podcast where we just go out in the yeah, world and find, find Lisa, Lisa Gardner. Gardner. Lisa! Probably not, yeah. Lisa! <laughs> <laughs> number three. Room Hate by Penelope Ward. <laughs> Room Hate. Yeah. A woman must share an inherited house with a man she dumped long ago. Uh-oh. That's sitcom material <laughs> right sure there. Is. Yeah. You mean if I want this I house, I have yeah. to move in with him? Right. Well, I don't like it either. <laughs> That's perfect. It's, just, it's a plot yeah. of Silver Spoons. That's great, yeah. No, it's not. Well, my mom has to move in with me, too. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, my wacky uncle is moving in. <laughs> You've got this all mapped yeah. out. Wacky know. Uncle owns a pizza shop. Oh, no, he they doesn't. Hit. So you got two sets, the house yeah, and, the, and pizza the pizza shop. shop. Those are your two main sets. Yeah, and you're like, i got to get away yeah. from this crazy house. And of course, they both pizza. have best friends. Yeah. And then one of them, I don't know which one, has a cousin yeah. that visits every now and then. Yeah. Maybe like in the fourth season, they'll become is, regular Is this like a spinoff remember? of Two Guys, A Girl, and a Pizza Place? I don't know, but it could like, be. Not yeah. Ryan Reynolds, because yeah. he's, he's, too, he's too big. Yeah. It's well, like one, Nathan... one guy, one girl, one pizza place. Where was Nathan Fillion in that? He was just like So he friend. wasn't one of the two he guys. He wasn't the other guy. All right, no. other guy who wasn't Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Call your agent. Yeah. We're going to get you in room hate. I think it was Peter Scolari. On NBC? <laughs> just kidding. CBS. <laughs> this seems like a CBS show. Yeah. I want to I wanna show with uh, Peter Scolari from Bosom Buddies. Okay. The other guy, uh-huh. who's not Ryan Reynolds... Uh, the other guy from Wham, uh-huh. who's not George Michael. Okay. And just the three of those guys just try to find their place in the world. Okay. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Okay. So Room Hate, that is a number three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number simple. two on the list, Me Before You by <laughs> Joy Joy Moyes. I said Joy Joy. <laughs> you were like, sorry, Joy Joy Moyes. <laughs> Jojo Moyes. <laughs> that was weird. Whew. That was weird. A woman who has barely been beyond her English village finds herself while oh, caring for a I wealthy and bitted... Quadriplegic. You're a wealthy and a bit of quadriplegic. <laughs> and I'm here to cheer you up. <laughs> I shan't be cheered up. I'm a quadriplegic woman. 
<laughs> <Just that. laughs> yeah. I'm doing an audio drama adaptation okay. where yeah. I play all the parts. So I love it's, kind of, it's kind of a big deal. Okay. It's kind of a big deal. She does cheer him up, though. I, I think so. Sure. Yeah. I mean, he still can't use his legs, but I think she... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Cheers him up. Yeah, all right. Cometh the Hour by Jeffrey Archer. <laughs> Is that number one? Uh, the sixth and penultimate? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, penultimate. penultimate. Yeah. Book of the Clifton... Chronicles brings the Cliftons and the Barringtons into the 1970s. Who are these people? Well, I don't know, but they're about to come to the 1970s. <laughs> that would be fun. They'll be there. Whoa! <laughs> listen to the music! This place is groovy. <laughs> hey, uh, Cliftons and Barringtons, why not join the giraffes? Why are you there? Yeah. Why are you in the sure. 70s? Yeah. These giraffes are cool. <laughs> One, two, three, four. We've got long necks, we eat off trees, but we don't travel in herds. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I know about giraffes. Yeah, that's it. Whatever. That was a great song. No, it was a good, yeah, it was a good job. Um, so you think All the Light We Cannot See Needs to Leave. It's been on this list for 73 weeks. So, yeah, I'm not going to make Girl it. Girl on the way. Train so has been there it. for 55. Nightingale has been there for 43. Yeah. Every now and then, James Patterson is like, I got a book, and they put it on there for a few weeks, and then anyone else? I like that now James Patterson is running like a contest for mm-hmm. his next... James Patterson is running like a Japanese game show mm-hmm. to be the next co-author wow. of one of his books. It's hilarious. Um, I love we've it. got some also rans that might uh, eleven twenty two sixty three by Stephen King mm-hmm. is back on the list. Really? At number fifteen. Oh, that's a great uh, book. Well, the show yeah. is out now on Hulu. Haven't seen it yet, but the, the book is really great. The Martian is now at place number thirteen, yeah. having been here for thirty nine weeks. Wow. So, Pretty good haul. Yeah. All right. That's all the book news I've got. Okay. So it's segment time. Is it? Primary segment. Yeah. We're doing, doing another author spotlight. We are doing author spotlight. We haven't done an author Cue spotlight. Cue the author spotlight so. music. It's time yeah, to spotlight. Let's do the author spotlight. Who's spotlights on the author? I don't, we don't need Ben. No, that was pretty do, good, actually. Do our own theme music. If you want, I can just find like a little drum beat or a little guitar riff <laughs> and just can you put it over it? that. Just auto-tune it. Auto-tune it. <laughs> Uh, All right. Well, after, if I do that, I'm going to want to do another spotlight every freaking yeah, episode. I know you sure will. Well, this week we're doing one. We've talked about this for a long time, and we put it off for various reasons. We we're finally Nick doing gunning. Well, I know it's my favorite. So it's, I mean, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. But this week we're talking some Robert B. Parker. Yes. So Robert B. Parker. Robert to the B to the Parker. Yes. He has earned the, the Don't moniker. Don't trust that Robert B. Parker in Apartment dean, 23. The, the Dean of American Crime Fiction. Ooh, the Dean. Robert B. Parker. Yep. Robert B. Parker, uh, 1973 to 2011. During that time, he published... Well, that's not his lifespan. That's I was just, like, he was only 30? No, that's his... The man pub- looked like his, he was 80. Yeah. That's his publishing. Okay. So during that time, he published uh, nearly 70 books. Wow. What a and dean. Most, almost all, there's a few that weren't, but almost all were bestsellers. So, mm-hmm. um, you know. Before we continue, yeah. this is kind of book news, and I just want everyone to hear how happy you are. I don't know why, I think Dean reminded me of James Dean, yeah. who reminded me of... Dean, uh, dean Kane? No, not Dean Kane. Oh. 90210. Oh, yeah. What's Luke face? Perry. Luke Perry. I don't know why Luke that's Perry. how I connected it, but Luke Perry is going to be on the show Archie on the no, CW. Riverdale. 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 Yeah. Playing Archie's dad. The CW is adapting the Archie comics into yeah. an hour-long drama. Yeah. Also, and one Luke of the Perry kids from uh, The Sweet Life with Zach yeah. and Cody yeah, is playing Jughead. Kids. I don't yeah. know if it's Zach or Cody. It's one of them. But neither yeah. one of them look like Jughead. No, they don't. So, anyway. Yeah. Sorry. Continue now. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, his process is... It was an interesting one. It, he he started with a brief sketch, like he didn't sit down with a big outline, and then he published plan. it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he just had a few things. There wasn't a detailed outline, and he would write and kind of solve the mystery as he went. It was never like this is the way this book is going to end. It was kind of like a surprise to him huh. as he would go. He'd write uh, five to ten pages a day and just roll with it. So five to ten pages, huh? yeah. So it's a it's a it's. It, I mean, you can, I think you can see that in his style, that that was the way he did it, and I think it worked very well. Um, so what, what, tell me your background with Robert B. Parker. Well, Nick, the first Robert B. Parker book I ever read was Night Passage, Night Passage. by Robert B. Parker. Yeah. It's part of the uh, Jesse, Jesse Stone, Stone series. It's the first one. I got it because you bought me a copy. That's true. I said I had to read it because it was a gift. That. Yeah, that's true. I did see You that. did. In the book it said, <laughs> this is a that. gift, you have to read it. Yeah. So I read it. It was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. And you've read the, well, you're, re- you're reading Trouble in Paradise is book two, right? It is book two. So you're reading book two. Yeah. Okay. 
Book two is not as good as the book one. I feel that's how I yeah I was looking over my my previous no. readings. I, I think it book one sets up a cool premise and book two is kind of okay, um, and it finds its footing a little bit after that. But actually, that was my first um, book that I read too was Night Passage, and actually it got on my radar because of the uh, the Tom Selleck movies. It's funny because in book two he call, says he's no Tom Selleck. Does he really? Yeah. Somebody says, like, well, you're a good-looking guy. He's like, well, I'm no Tom Selleck. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That, that was long before the yeah. movies. So that's, that's, that's a funny little thing. Uh, so Robert Parker, I mean, I guess we can, we can stick with Jesse Stone for a minute here. Okay. But um, between 1997 and uh, 2010, Robert Parker wrote nine Jesse Stone books. Uh, and then the series book is, was continued first by Michael Brandman and then by Reed uh, Farrell Coleman. And so, altogether, there are 14 Jesse Stone books. Okay. Uh, the movies, which originally aired on CBS from 2005 to 2012, right. uh, CBS ran eight of them, and then it was recently picked up by the Hall- Hallmark Channel, and a ninth was produced called Lost in Paris. Now, the first couple are adaptations of the books, and by... You mean Lost in Paradise? What, what do you mean? You said Lost in Paris. Paradise, yeah. Yeah. The first... <laughs> I think the first four Jesse of Stone's the movies... Jesse Stone's going to France. ...are based on actual... Parker books and the rest of them, the, the books just greatly diverge and they go on their own thing. It's funny because, you know, Selleck is what, 60s? Yeah. And the character in the movies is just Tom Selleck's age. And I think that that's so much more interesting than in the books, he's like 35. Yeah. It's like mid 30s. Yeah. So, you know, you come to it, I guess it's just, it's you, more unique to have a character in his 60s yeah. behaving like Jesse Stone behaves because yeah. it's just sort of like, man, this guy. You know, gets a lot of action. Yeah, so I tend to like when I when I read the books, I tend to think of him as, okay. as like the Tom Selleck character because that was my first introduction into the character. All right. Uh, so I started with with that, and I went off and read my first Spencer book, uh, backstory, because Jesse Stone. There's a big gap between the Jesse Stone books, uh-huh. and Jesse appears in this uh, in backstory, which is a Spencer book. Spencer book thirty, I think. Is Spencer. Does he talk in short, abbreviated sentences like Jesse Stone? He he does, but it, it's more it's different. I mean, it's this, his Robert Parker's style I think comes through in whatever he's doing, uh, whether it's the the um, the westerns, Jesse Stone, Sonny Randall, uh, they all tend to have that that real clipped, short yeah. way of speaking. But there is there is I think a distinct difference between. Like, I would never read Jesse Stone dialogue and think, oh, that's Spencer. Because okay. there's, there's something that's different about the two. Um, but Jesse Stone led me to Spencer. And I wasn't that thrilled with the Spencer book that I first read. Okay. Um, but I was going into the series so late. Like, again, that was book 30. So I didn't, uh, I didn't really appreciate it that much. Uh, then I, uh, next, the next series I read was Appaloosa. So have you seen the movie Appaloosa? I haven't seen the movie Appaloosa. Okay. I've read the book Appaloosa. You read the book? Yeah. Oh, did you like it? Yeah. I loved it. It was really good. Yeah. I I, more Westerns were that easy to read. I know. They're yeah. Great. It's really well written. Um, now that, uh, the way I came across Appaloosa, I, I'd been a Robert Parker fan. I read the Jesse Stone. I read the Spencer. And then when Appaloosa came out, my friend Chris and I just went to see it. Mm-hmm. And in the credits, it was like based on a book by Robert Parker. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I didn't even know. So then I picked up the the Everett uh, Everett what is it Everett Hitch Virgil Colin Everett Hitch yeah. yeah I picked up that series Parker wrote four of those and then Robert Knott took it over not a fan of the Robert Knott ones got it but uh, not do you think you would read more of the uh, maybe you told me that the second book isn't as good well I think the first book really says a lot about their friendship I don't want to spoil how it goes but there's the ending of it has kind of a, a feeling of finality yeah. And you think like, wow, you know, that's a that's a big deal. What mm-hmm. just happened there? The second book, I think, at that point, they kind of decide to make it a series. The second book has to undo that a little bit. Okay. And so it kind of it <laughs> takes away the uh, the big. I don't know. The the emotional payoff of the first book is kind of undercut by the second book being like, a, well, here we are to another adventure. Uh, but after that, it it picks back up again as a series, uh, and I I did enjoy it, but not a fan of the Robert Knott ones. Sonny Randall is interesting because it's his only primary female protagonist, and she is written very differently than the others. Okay. Uh, she's, a, she's just a PI. She's got she's kind of similar to Jesse Stone in that she has this codependent ex-husband who they're still kind of in each other's lives, uh, like <laughs> Jesse with his wife. But 
this this series, Sunny Randa, was started because the actress Helen Hunt was like, I would love to play one of your characters. And so he wrote the first Sunny Randa book with the goal of turning it into a movie for Helen Hunt. Right. And it just never materialized. What? Yeah. It never happened. Why not? I don't know. But I, I see, like, I would, star I, would Hollywood? Love, I would love right now if Helen Hunt appeared as Sunny Randall in one of the Jesse Stone movies. I think yeah. that would be so cool. If it would, I don't really, it's weird to me to, because I don't see Helen Hunt playing that role. It's a very different hmm. type than I would picture Helen Hunt in, but. I mean, don't I put Helen Hunt in the box. No, I know. I'll trust Robert Parker. That's, that's fine. Um, he liked the series, so he decided, you know, to continue it. And eventually, the Sunny Randall and the Jesse Stone books kind of become intertwined. They, they work hmm. together a little Wait, bit. Wait, romantically? Well, I don't know. I haven't gotten that far. Oh my gosh! But I know they they connect and they team up here and there. But I think once the once Parker dies and the new authors take over, I think Sonny Randall is pretty much no, no more. So he died. Would you say his books escaped that relationship? <laughs> like, then like is Mrs. the way you describe yeah, that so. now? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm surprised that they. I mean, I, I know that they they do that with authors. Certainly. I mean, William Johnstone's been gone for a long time, and his books keep coming. Same with Clancy. I mean, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things where they're continued, but. I mean, with the exception of Sonny Randall, but his three primary series all have continued on yeah. and have continued to thrive. So, yeah. No, I haven't read any of the new um, uh, Spencer or Jesse Stone. But that doesn't happen to Michael Crichton. No, it's not like it's. You know, no, you're not going to continue. Yeah. There's no Jurassic. JD Rob Jurassic. Yeah. <laughs> no, attack. it's not going to happen. I don't know how I feel about that. Honestly, uh, publishers, I would read any more Jurassic Park fiction you put would out you? there. Would you? Yes. I read the junior novelization of Jurassic well, Park yeah. three. Yeah. Oh, did I? I didn't say this, but I found a, at a thrift store. You were there. Yeah. Uh, the science behind Jurassic Park and the Lost World. That's true. I'm going to read it uh, and probably agree and disagree with it. Yes, I'm sure it will be great. So I'm sure it will be great. Yeah, I think I would. If, if some publisher out there was like, "We're getting some new authors, and they're just going to write a bunch of Jurassic Park books." Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. I would read them. So you mentioned, you said something early on that I want to jump back to. You said that if every Westerns were written as easily as Appaloosa, you would read more Westerns. What, yes. do, you, what do you mean by that? I just mean the, the sparse writing. Okay. I feel like his type of writing goes well with Westerns. I think it does too. The, yeah. the spark, because you get, you know, you have somebody who like talks the way, say, Jesse Stone or yeah. the characters in Appaloosa talks today and it's just like man that guy's anti-social yeah. that guy needs to work it out but if it's in the west you're like oh i get it yeah people are like that. well that's you know jesse stone does have kind of a cowboy vibe i don't yeah. think that's true of spencer but jesse stone yeah. definitely yeah. has that um yeah well there are the four colon hitch as i said and there's also a standalone called gunman's rhapsody mm -hmm. but it it is i thought i was impressed with the appaloosa books because it it feels modern but mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like you know it doesn't feel like anachronistic in that it doesn't feel like, oh, here are these characters who are, let's pretend it's the Old West, but they're really just, it's today. Yeah. I mean, it still has a Western vibe to it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel, you know, stodgy or old or, you Would know, you watch uh, CW's The Arrows, not Arrow, Flash, CW's The Flash character vibe in the Westerns? Why not? Yeah. yeah. Bring it on. And then you could say it has a, it's yeah. a Western vibe. Yeah. So, sorry. No, that's okay. No, that's I am. Right. Hey, hey. I am so sorry. I, I accept, <laughs> accept your apology. I am so we sorry. We did, uh, last year we did The Judas Goat, which is a fifth Spencer book as a book club, and it was one of the most... Did you just say last year? Yeah. When last year? I don't know. Because we were recording a podcast when you said that. Oh, okay. I'm just saying, we've been doing this for a long time now. Yeah. Well, we did The Judas Goat as a book club, and it was one of the ones that got the most... Like, everybody agreed we all liked it. Nice. And it's rare that that happens. I mean, usually we, we have different things. That yeah. We, but everybody liked the Judas Goat, which was very, for me, it was like, oh, that's great. Because I kind of <laughs> slipped in one of my favorites to see what people right. would think. So, And it, the funny thing was, it was not one of my favorites. I, I huh. kind of rated it lower than I rate a lot of his books. Okay. Uh, it was still good, but it just, it didn't have the strength that I think some of the other ones did. Yeah. But people... Uh, People really got into yeah. it. Sunny Randall is my wife's favorite series. She she picked that up, and has she's actually ahead of me. She's read more of these than I have. Wow. And I tried to get her to read Jesse Stone, and she just didn't like it at all. And I'd always I thought, well, his writing is you know his similar. So she, if she likes Sunny Randall, she'll like Jesse Stone. But when I picked up the Jesse Stone book, I was I was struck by just how different they were because I I did kind of remember it being similar. So I think that he, he manages to have these characters 
it written in a style that that is the sparse quick sentences right uh real dialogue heavy but mm -hmm. um still sparse but he manages to keep all these series separate and they all have their own identity it doesn't just feel like we're plugging in oh this is spencer not jesse stone i think they all each uh, even even in a very defined style have their own unique um voice to them so I've, I've always appreciated that about them there's so many that i haven't read that's the exciting thing you know i mean the thing was like how you feel about michael crichton i mean you've got one maybe two michael crichtons and then you're done you know, you have no more new Michael Crichton Yeah, that's true. But for me, I mean, I've read six out of the, I think, 40 uh, <laughs> Spencer books that he's yeah, written. you've got a ways to go. I do. I have a few Jesse Stones. I have maybe just two Sonny Randalls and then I have the standalones. Um, so I have a lot. So I'm, I'm happy about that, that I still have so many Robert Parker books to read and enjoy. Uh, now, what I've never read or even really flipped through are his YA books. Oh, yeah, the, the Spencer series. Yeah, I need to get those for us. I have read, uh, I said last time, The Boxer, the Boxer and the, the Spy. Spy. Yeah. Now, I, I think he's got, I think it's just three YA books. That, I remember that right. one and the two Spencer books? No, it's one Spencer book, which is, I think, Chasing the Bear, it's called. Okay. Uh, which is, is technically a young Spencer book, but as I mentioned, a lot of the reviews are saying, like, well, this isn't really YA. It's just Spencer Younger. Yeah. Uh, so there's Chasing the Bear, there's The Boxer and the Spy, which you read and we have, and then there's Eden Bill Owls. It hmm. remind me again how you, you, what you said about... You know. uh, I said the box and the spy was weird because it's like that review. It doesn't really... I mean, I get that it's YA. Yeah. And that the characters are teens, but the teens don't talk okay. like teens at all. They just talk like Jesse Stone characters uh -huh. or uh, Robert B. Parker characters. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, in those short, fragmented sentences, they're all... Uh, old souls wiser than their years okay. and it's just you know it, it's straight and they're solving like straight up murder right. mysteries <laughs> so murder and adultery mysteries and it's just like I, all right this is ya but yeah it wasn't i mean clearly it wasn't a focus for him because these aren't it wasn't like he was writing these right up yeah. until his death i mean he he wrote the three and then I think that was kind of it. I think it was just, a, he just kind of dabbled in it. Yeah. But I think it's interesting that he has those. I'll probably, I mean, we have Boxer and the Spy, so I'll probably pick that up. Edenville Owls sounded pretty good to me. I get it. I'm dabbing. Yeah, it's physical comedy again. They can't. Dra it's oh, a visual, right. Listeners, it's a visual man, joke, you so are missing. Really, yeah. Grade A it doesn't comedy. doesn't really work. All right. Okay, continue. So uh, there's, there's been quite a few media adaptations of his. Um, there's uh, the Jesse Stone movies on CBS and now Hallmark, like I said. Yeah. Uh, the classic Spencer for Hire show of Robert Ulrich, uh, which spun off uh, one of the side characters, Hawk, and a man called Hawk. Hawk was played by Avery Brooks, who went on to play Benjamin Sisko in Deep Space Nine. Odd little curio there. Yeah. The Spencer sure. books. Definitely the Spencer odd. Uh, character was picked up again in the 90s and early 2000s by A&E. Uh, with a series of movies starring Joe Montana as... Not Joe Montana. Oh, uh, okay. For a second, I was like, yeah. really? As Spencer. There's three of those movies. And then, actually, he still does the Spencer audiobooks. So That's he played the character in a few movies, and now he's doing the audio. All while going to Hall of Fame tours. Yeah. For his years yeah. as the it's, <laughs> San Francisco 49ers quarterback. It's funny with the... I've, I've learned that, for me, Robert Parker does not work on audio. Really? Because it's all the he said, she said, he yeah. should. And it's like, boof. Yeah. It gets... I tried to listen to, I think, the sequel to Appaloosa. Yeah. Or maybe Blue Devil. I don't know. I tried to listen to that on audio, and I got through about half of it. And listening was like, to, I hate this! Listening to audiobooks has, has made me conscious when I write to try not to make so many he said, she said. Yeah. To just assume that the author knows yeah. that after this sentence, if it's especially with two characters, yeah. just... We'll, we'll follow. Yeah, it's it is funny what a difference audiobooks can make because you're yeah. there's series that I like that I she recognize said, like these are kind she of said. yeah. I mean there's series that I like that are sort of like well this is just a goofy fun read yeah. and when I'm reading it it doesn't stand out to me so much yeah. you know I just kind of accept it for what it yeah. is but you try listening to an audiobook yeah. of a poorly written book and it's just every single word you're like that is so stupid yeah. why are you saying that yeah. don't say that so it is it does make a big difference. Yeah. Would you read more Robert Parker? Uh, sure. Okay, I'm. Uh, <laughs> you don't seem that that. Uh, no, I might it, read but... the next Jesse Stone book mm -hmm. if it's better than. Yeah, the... that's a. It, it is. It definitely is. Uh, that that is a strong series. I'm I'm interested. The next one I'm on sort and of chronologically. Is Western one. Oh, the Appaloosa. Yeah, chronologically yeah. with Jesse Stone. You're saying. Yeah, the next the next one that I'm on is the first one where Jesse Stone and Sonny Randall meet up. 
fun. Yeah. My wife read it and she didn't like it so much because maybe she, she doesn't like Jesse Stone. Felt like, yeah, I think that's probably sounds it. like the she problem felt like her. The, the style didn't. She loves the Jesse Stone movies, but oh really? Yeah. Well, I think she, she might, felt maybe that she the loves styles didn't quite blend. Tom so. Selleck. I like the Jesse Stone series, so maybe I'll like it more than she does. But I okay. am really interested to see these two characters interact because right. it's it's hard to picture. But mm-hmm. yeah. and so Jesse Stone dated. Uh, Courtney Cox's character on Friends. Yeah, for Jesse Stone. Yeah, yeah. He was also a PI in Hawaii in the yeah. in the late seventies. Monica, there we go. 80s. Jesse Stone dated. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. So. And he had to raise a baby. Yeah, yeah. with Ted Danson and, yeah. and Steve Gutenberg. Yeah. So Jesse Stone's been through a yeah. lot. I think is what we're learning. Change this. Change what? Diaper. Yeah. Why? Robert B. Parker, the dean of crime fiction. That's my impression of Jesse Stone. Yeah, I like changing it. a diaper or having like Ted it. Danson do it. <laughs> well, uh, on on the topic of Robert B. Parker. We're, we're going to do our first uh, Take 5 segment. So what we're doing, we're, we're bringing in a special guest star. Uh-huh. We're going to ask her five questions okay. that pertain to... Jesse Stone. Not Jesse Stone. Not Jesse Stone. Robert, well, maybe, yet. Maybe. Robert B. Parker. We're going to bring her in. We're going we're gonna to grill her with... <laughs> no, not really. With five questions pertaining sure. to Robert B. Parker. So this is our Take 5 segment. Okay. So Eric, you have to mm-hmm. ma'am. All right. Well, I can uh, our special guest. I'll just read my, uh, my Facebook Okay. Wall. To no, no, no. Our no. listeners. You gotta be. You gotta All be. right. Um, oh, hey, the official Bob's Burgers cookbook is coming soon. So, speaking of book news, uh, you can get car free cloud bread. Uh, it's a game changer, Nick, according to my Facebook wall. Okay. And, All right, now, uh, Eric, you're gonna have to share. Hey, look at this. Uh, Ty Sheridan, he's playing Cyclops in the new X Men movie. He's gonna be playing the main character in Steven Spielberg's Ready Player One, oh, which is a that. book. That actually is interesting to me. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. I'm going to have to share a microphone with you because we have our special guest, sure. Eileen Tessa. Our, is that how you say your name? Texa. Texa. Yeah. Texa. Mm-hmm. Our, our auditorium director. We had yep. to get her in here while we still could, while we yeah. could afford her, while we could get her for free. <laughs> Starting next week, her rates are going to go way up. Yeah. So it's called a consultant. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so Eileen, we have been talking about uh, Robert B. Parker, who is a favorite of mine. Eric's a little new to the Robert B. Parker game. Mm-hmm. I know he's an old favorite of yours. So we wanted to have you on for our Take 5 segment. And we have five questions pertaining to Robert B. Parker that we want to ask you and uh, just see what you think of these. So our first question, simple question, uh, how did you first come across Robert B. Parker? So for Eric and me, we both we both read the first Jesse Stone, Night Passage. Mm-hmm. That was our first. And I actually, I, I first watched the Jesse Stone movie. And that got me interested in the novel. So what, what was it for you? Well, I, I think that the Spencer television program with Robert... Oh, Ulrich? Uh, Ulrich. Ulrich. Yeah. Ulrich. Um, and then I would... Then I sort of started... I started reading them. But I've okay. always really liked mysteries. As a okay. child, I was reading... My mother probably shouldn't have let me read this. Uh, a lot of <laughs> Earl Stanley Gardner, Perry okay. Mason. I always yeah. liked procedural, uh-huh. private eye, a little bit of blood and guts going uh-huh. on. So... Um, yeah, I think probably the television program, and then okay. I just whipped my way into the Spencer and the Sonny Randall okay. and the Jesse Stone. Okay, so you, you've got everything across the board. Um, have you, you, know, you mentioned Spencer for Hire. Have you seen any of the other adaptations? This is question two. Have you seen the adaptations of his books? No, I, I don't believe I have. I know that um, Tom Selleck plays Jesse Stone. Yeah. Which I really should probably catch. Oh, you haven't seen any? Oh, no, no, but it's interesting because I... I have seen uh, him in many, many things. Yeah. He is the face that I think of when I really? read Jesse Stone. Oh, yeah, funny. without a doubt. Yeah. I was saying to Eric when I when I read the when I read the books, I tend to do that same thing. You know, I think like I'm I'm picturing Tom Selleck saying all that. What What were you saying about? Well, I mean, Robert B. Parker doesn't look unlike. Yeah, he does have a Tom, Tom Selleck. Selleck. Vibe. <laughs> Very Eric true. said there's a Tom Selleck. Uh, I was reading I'm reading Trouble in Paradise, and at one point somebody says something about Jesse Stone being handsome and. Jesse Stone says, well, I'm no Tom Selleck. This is before. <laughs> it's like 10 years before the movie, yeah. so that's just a funny little yeah. that's a funny little thing. Well, there, as you said, there was Spencer for Hire. Spencer for Hire spun off the character of Hawk into his own show, A Man Called Hawk. Right, but, and I don't think I ever saw yeah, it. I didn't see it either. And then, uh, I think it was somewhat short-lived. It was. I think it's maybe just one season. Then mm-hmm. A&E picked up uh, the Spencer with uh, Joe Montana as... Uh, as I think you know him from the audiobooks, he narrates a lot of the, yeah. the Spencer audiobooks, which is cool. Uh, Naughton uh, narrates some as well as Montagna. Ah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Um, so you haven't seen Jesse Stone? Did you see Appaloosa, the western? Haven't done any of the uh, any of the westerns. No, at all. I like them. That movie's really good. The movie is such a close adaptation of the book too. It stays very faithful. 
Uh, we talked a little bit about his, he has a very, I think, unique style. Even in this genre, his style stands out to me. What, what appeals to you about his style? Well, he's a really good storyteller. Yeah. And he's got a very clean style. The he mm-hmm. said, she said yeah. becomes annoying at times, yeah. but it also makes things very clear on what's going yeah, on. <laughs> um, I like his, some of the things he says or how he, how he places, um, places things. He, he, inc- he includes a lot of race in it. Mm-hmm. He includes a lot of religion in it. Not, not as a subject, but just as a... Yeah as part of life. Yeah. And I, I, I really do like that. I, I, think, I think the Spencer is interesting because Robert Parker brought the, the, the private investigator out of California mm-hmm. where he's smoking in, in, yeah. a, in a smoke-filled room and he's yeah. unhappy and he's got the, the floozy secretary yeah. into somebody who's happy with his life, right. is in a nice relationship, and yeah. has friends. Yeah. And I, I think that's sort of interesting. Yeah, it is very different. One thing I, I like about what he tends to do with his characters is there's always a little, kind of a little quirk that he gives them. And I think for Spencer, the cooking. You know, Spencer's always yes, cooking yes. a very elaborate meal, and he kind of works it into the dialogue. Have you? I don't think Jesse Stone does this. No. Yeah. I, I wished I were Susan. The stuff he I know. The, the stuff I he know. cooks yeah, sounds he was, wonderful. He was, making, he was making pork chops, and he was like slicing up a green apple and frying it in with the pork chops, and just doing all this stuff. And I'm like, man, I gotta stop right now and eat food. But <laughs> but Sonny Randall has her dog. She's got her bull terrier. Rosie. She's, yep. Yeah. She's always with Rosie. Uh, Jesse Stone, he's got the baseball. Of course, he has the drinking. Yeah. But, you know, he tends, he tends to give them each a little, bit of, um, a little bit of flair to the character, and I think in a believable way. Like, mm-hmm. It never feels forced to me that this character has this, this quirk or this particular like. It just feels... He works that stuff in naturally, so it just seems like the character is just a, a well-rounded... I mean, this is who this person is, and I think that's good, the way well, he does that. One thing about Parker, because he does it in a series, you become friends with them yeah you know in in the case of jesse stone you know he's got an ex-wife jen yes. <laughs> he's got a relationship with sonny yeah. he, he, and it's it's interesting as it as it keeps going along and you want to see what happens next yeah, absolutely so I, so what i'm saying is that you really should start from the beginning i think so too yeah i was i was telling to eric uh, my first spencer i read just because it was uh, jesse stone made a cameo in it and i was reading jesse stone so i read spencer for that and it just didn't work reading a Book, starting with book 30 was a weird <laughs> a weird thing to do so I, I did go back and, and I started the original books one thing I like about uh, the way he the way he does these characters too is that they are they do have little minor crossovers I think there was a Spencer that I was reading and he he described seeing Sonny he never said there's Sonny Randall but he described how we know she looks with the bull terrier you know jogging in front of some place and I just thought that was cool and Susan from the Spencer series is Sonny Randall's therapist Right, so right. there's just all these little these little connections that I always Stephen King does that too. He's like the king of doing that with these with these little crossovers. Um, we we've discussed a little bit his now that uh, Robert Parker's passed away. He has these new co-authors. Have you read any of the books written by the new authors? I've read at least one. Okay, and I, I read it with the with the eye on how he was doing in terms yeah. of style. And it was very similar to the style, oh, but good. I can't even remember what one I did read. Okay. But it didn't lack that that sparkle. Lacked it. Okay. It, yeah. it, it was okay. I would probably still read another one. Yeah. Just to give him another try. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad that I mean, obviously it wasn't one of the westerns because you hadn't read those, but I'm glad to hear that they're actually trying to mimic the style in some way because that was my problem with Robert Knott, who took over the uh, western series, is that it's not Robert Parker's tone his style at all. It's completely different. So I, I think that's an odd thing to do. I think it would make much more sense if you're going to continue a series to try to honor the series. You know. But did you like his writing style? I didn't. Not thinking about Parker. <laughs> no, I didn't. It was so wordy. you know. And like Eric made the point that he likes Appaloosa because it is so sparse and so crisp and clean. Mm-hmm. And the Robert Knott books are just the complete opposite of that. It's like you know, he gives us a whole page of, of description and stuff where Robert Parker would be like, it was warm out, you know? So, no, it didn't work for me at all. I didn't like it. I, I will, once I get to the to the Spencer and Jesse Stone written by new authors, I'll give them a shot. But, I don't know, I'm not hopeful because it's really, it's Parker's writing, I think, that, that pulls me in even more than the characters <laughs> he creates. So, um, okay, this is, are we on take four. Take This is take, no, that was take four. This is take five. Do you have a favorite Parker book or character or series? Okay, quite actually, 
the last book I read is usually my favorite book. Okay. Um, and I do a lot of uh, books on tape. Yeah. I don't think they're called tape anymore. CD? Yeah. CD, sure. Um, I, I just finished High Profile, which I really did like. That's Jesse Stone? That's a Stone? Jesse Stone. Okay. Hmm. Um, because it included Sonny Randall yeah. in it, and it included Jen, the ex-wife, yeah. and it, it sort of sort of put together a lot of his, his background. Okay. So I, I thought that was good. Do you have, is there a series that you like the best? Um... I mean, Spencer's, Spencer's the longest running. You know, that's the, probably the one you're most familiar with. Well, I just started getting into Jesse Stone, and okay. I really do like it. Yeah. Although I do like Spencer for his, his not angst. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Spencer is probably the, probably the most well-adjusted, I would say, because Sonny has a similar, St. Eric, Sonny mm-hmm. has a similar setup with her ex, you know, where they're both, they have this weird thing. But Spencer is just going along. You know, he enjoys his work. He enjoys his life, as you said, so... Yeah, that, that is nice. I think I would probably say Jesse Stone is my favorite. It and, was my introduction to Robert Parker, mm-hmm. and it's the one that I think of when I think of him. Quite actually, I do like the insertion of the dogs in there. Yeah, um, yeah. A pearl lying on the couch yep. with her tongue out. Yeah. Rosie's sitting there saying, it's okay, you can leave yeah. me in the car, just crack the windows, we're good. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he, he makes them characters, you know, yes, without he does. overdoing it, because it's easy to overdo it, but he, he works them in nicely, so... Well, great. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. On our Take 5. And congratulations on your retirement. I thank you so we much. We wish you well in the future. And thank you for penciling in all the books before you could leave. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I yeah. guess that's uh, so library we'll have news. have to send us your uh, consulting fee. Yeah, that's true. We'll have to we'll get that on the books. Bag. We'll call her in. Yeah. yeah. We'll need a quote. <laughs> so what do you have coming up for library events, Eric? Uh, library events. This comes up March 1st. So, yep. Anime Club tomorrow. Hey. Unless you're listening well, to Well, actually, it'll come out February 29th because it's leap year. Oh, that's, that's right. It's a crazy leap year day. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, then March 2nd starts Anime Club yeah. at uh, 6 o'clock until 7.30 to 8-ish. Okay. Ish. And this is the inaugural run for yeah. Anime Club. Yeah. The Teen Anime Club, 12 to 18. Okay. Do you know what you're screening? Uh, no. Okay. So because I don't know what they're going to want to watch. Up for the group. We'll have okay. to... Figure out how we're going right. to figure out that process. Maybe democratically. Voting. Yeah, yeah. Vote it. definitely Sign democratically. Nothing like a bunch of teenagers figuring out something democratically. I know that'll be fun um, with the time crunch. But there'll be snacks. There'll be anime. Uh, it'll be fun. Join yeah. us for the book club on Wednesday, March third at three o'clock. We're reading Track of the Cat. Yeah. What's All our right. next auditorium program? I mean, it's it's Emerald Isle, right? Um, Emerald Isle Irish Band, March tenth. 7 o'clock. Yes, okay. and be sure to join us ahead of time at 5.30. We're doing a special reception for Eileen. So spread the word. Join us at 5.30. Cake, punch. Monday Club Room. In the Monday Club Room. March 10th. March 10th. Okay. And then, then stay for Emerald Isle. Yeah. They're an old favorite. They've been here quite a few times, haven't they? Quite actually, they've been here almost as long as I've been. Oh, yeah? Uh, Emerald Isle oh. comes in the spring. Creek Bend Band comes in the fall. And we seem to have a really good... Uh, Fan club for Oh, yeah, I know. When I'm, when I'm on the, I've answered quite a few phone calls where people saying, like, when's Emerald Isle coming? When's Creek Band? So people are excited about it. Okay. Um, March 11th is The Good Dinosaur at 3.30. Oh, have you seen that yet? No. I've been wanting to. I'll be... No. I don't know why I just said no, but yeah, I want to see it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, because, I want to see it, too. Uh, because, you know, dinosaur. And then uh, our book club is March... Eighth. Eighth. Yeah. The for YA Divergent. for Adults book club for Divergent. Yeah. Man, I've only got two weeks to read that. I know. you got to hurry up. Barely. Well, I'm not quite finished yeah. with Track of the Cat, so I've got to speed up, too. All right. All right. Well, thanks we for joining for us, you, everyone. Listeners. You can find us on SoundCloud. You can find us on iTunes. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Uh, Twitter, Twitter, we're at All the Book Show. And you can find us at David A. Howe Public yeah. Library on Facebook. Yeah. And All as right. we always say, spread the word. Yeah. We don't ever say that. No, we don't. But we should. If you like yeah. us, tell a friend. <laughs> Share us on Facebook. Share right. us on Twitter. All right. Whatever. And we'll see you next time for episode 29. Well, don't tell them what number it's going to be. Sorry. All right. Episode whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye.